Welcome back, Five Aces. Battle control initialized. Hey, hey, people! Five backlogs here with the mother of all backlogs, doing some some clearing out, cleaning out the closet here. Um, I've been missing in action for quite a bit, and the sole reason for that was uh, famil uh, familial issues, I guess. Uh, family issues just got in the way of casting, but now we're back, and um, backer than ever. And I couldn't be more stoked because it's now in the evening, and I've got plenty of time at my hand, finally. Uh, almost no things to grade at the moment, so that's pretty good, you know, at least before the autumn holidays kick in. Yeah. Uh, what else is new? Uh, this is actually Kaf versus Mr. Colorblind AK Fazer round two. So why is why are there two or three more games? I kind of missed out on two uh, out on two of those. I thought it was the best of three. It wasn't. I just didn't download the full folder, and as a result, I am now in the in the glorious position of having to basically catch up on the casting. Uh, so far the scoreline is a 2-1 for Cav. The Cavalry definitely in the lead, but Mr. Colorblind Fazer is gonna strike back, presumably. So let's see how this pans out. This is Dragon King version 2. I've seen the map and I've reminisced that it reminded me of uh, uh, something, something, something island. You know, the uh, island map. Ooh, Engineer sneaking away. Really aggressive start from Cav again, and I'm wondering where are Fazos infantrymen about? Oh, he went for the FCOM. That is a curious choice because it's not very efficient, even if you snake walk with a power plant. Um, there's still some long distance mining going on here, and you're not going to be able to saturate this mine fully because you're not going to build your war factory up here. So, in my opinion, this is mostly useful for sneaky tech, but uh, that's not something we're expecting from Fazer. <laughs> Let's be real here. Alrighty, let's see how this pans out because really Kav is just at a just in a really good position. Does have the infantry out on the map. Numerical advantage for the time being. Fazer has a medic mixed in, so that's it's, it's gonna tie up things a little bit. War factory timings are even, and while the early game is slowing down a little bit, let's talk about what's happening in real life. Um, I've read about your uh, your summer comments and about your uh, especially about the climate change comments and the uh, I've got something more co to contribute here. I just found out that uh, I planted a fig tree. I, I think I mentioned that. I planted lots of things now that we've got a garden in uh, in the western part of Austria. Uh, I finally got access to a little plot of land and so what I planted was a, a metric factor of, of hot chilies because I'm a huge hot chili buff and B more importantly, a little fig tree. And I thought, okay, this is gonna take uh, two or three years probably to bear fruits. Nope, it's bearing fruit right now, five months after I have planted it, and the fruits are now ripe. So uh, if you need any more, <laughs> any more indication on where the climate is heading, yep, we've got figs in Austria now. I've got them homegrown in my garden. It's pretty awesome. All right. Back to the game. APC at hands. Is that gonna be a rocket soldier drop? I presume not, because tends to not be tends to not be calf style. He's not usually going for some drop cheese. Ranger out here. The actually the numerical advantage is with Mr. Colorblind for the time being in terms of army mass. Ooh, he could get two F comes for the price of zero. Yeah. Two F comes from Mr. Colorblind already. Wait. He's going for the third. What is going on here? This is not going to help you in any way, shape, or form. This is just going to stretch you thin. Uh, you remember that Sun Tzu a comment about divide and conquer? Yeah, if you stretch your army too thin, that's what happens. You just uh, end up not being able to defend against the concert and push. Because your opponent can just pick at their battles. And the reinforcement lines here are way too spread out. <laughs> APC finds out about the sneaky NG. Is there gonna be a field defense? No, too late. Too late. Okay, so that puts us at F parity. What? Barracks, oh, that's so juicy. That is a field day for the Ranger. Wait, you can stay in trade? He could have gotten all those four rocket soldiers. 
Oh, that was a missed opportunity for Fazer here. Getting four rockets and getting away with it, that's just crucial. That would be so big. Okay, the army is camping the ore field. To be fair, Fazer does have a scary army out here. Not all of it has been revealed yet, just a little detachment. So this is going in completely blind. Mm, trying to snipe the NG over the ridge. I think it's gonna connect. Yup. Oh, no way. No way that was so close. However, this may be a, an opportune moment for Kav to evacuate his main base. He doesn't have much in the way of field defenses for the time being. Yeah, he's going straight for the Conyard. Oh my lord! Surgical strike! And some harvesters to boot, maybe? Let's see. One harvester down. Ooh, that is juicy. Still, he trades off an army for it, so at the end of the day, a net value loss. But it. Oh! oh double harvester down here as well. And there is a cheeky engineer attempt. Wait a second! Is he actually gonna get that? Oh my goodness. Oh, nice sell. Carve with the sneaky. That was such a beautiful sneaky play. If only Fazer had been aware of that rifle soldier, I think he would have gotten away with getting the conyard. Jeez. But that does put Carve at the back foot. Is he gonna lose another harvester? Right now he only has three, right? No, four. Okay, he, he built a sneaky harvester and sneaky expansion. So there is that. Yeah, long distance mining is the name of the game for both players. And the corner mines are actually being used. I'm, I'm kind of surprised about that. Round two. Calf is not. Um, Calf is under the weather here. Wow. Fazer not letting loose with the pressure. I think. I think that Fazer would have enough to push out here. He obviously doesn't know about it though. Radar dome. So no sneaky tech. Just a good old Raider Rush, which uh, is not really Raider Rush, but in terms of RHL games, it certainly is. That is an early Raider timing at minute 7. Okay, Kav doesn't know where to defend. He's like, uh, which direction are you coming from again? Just give me some some pointers would be nice. Okay, taking out the old Derek at least. He should probably not push in here. Kav does have the army advantage. And very distinctly so. I think this this is very obvious. Ah, with the tanks though. With the line of sight from the tanks, it's actually looking really good for Fazer. Despite Cap having a numerical advantage, he is getting cleaned the fuck up. Wow. That was obliteration, but now there's a wall of flame. Eh, it's not gonna stand for too long. All right, wall of flame has been melted officially. Right, that's the first Blackhawk, so all, all he needs to do now is wait for the artillery to arrive. Still a medium tank production, but that's fine. Down goes the refinery. Another crucial mining spot lost here. Kav! It's not looking too hot for him. So unless he wins the all-in, he is dead in the water. Yeah. Ah, he did not hit that one yet. There we go. Okay, there is one harvester going down in retaliation, but I feel that, like that's just not enough. Yep. Down goes the sneaky expansion number two as well. There is no hope in this game for Cap. I think that's going to be the 2-2. Two -two. That's going to be the great equalizer. So we're going to be up to a, a surprise. A surprise, what, what's it called? Silver Scrapes match? Oh, unless the heavy tanks can get some mad value. Oh, an NG? Really? Wow, the pillbox actually killed the, the tank with so low health. No way! Ah, okay. There's the black card. There we go. That was a dicey situation, but at the end of the day... Kav losing to build orders. Yeah. Kav losing out to not having his tanks in front, I feel. And now he is completely surrounded. There's gonna be the push. Just waiting on it. Uh, maybe Fazer wants to clean up the corner mines first, but it doesn't look like it's necessary. Still a lot of harvesters for Kav, but it just doesn't have any, any real estate to mine from. Oh, the Kaniad is uh, in a very unfortunate position here. I think that's his last one, isn't it? 
Yeah, down she goes. And now there is single file formation for the soldiers that are trickling in. Kaf can, Kaf can trade well here, but he's losing more harvesters. Oh, this is so dire. Yeah, this game is done and dusted. There is no more opportunity for expanding because you don't want to, you really don't want to spend 2,000 on an MCV at this stage of the game. So you can't build anything. Other than riflemen, rocket soldiers and heavy tanks. That's a good old ZX Ganon build. Or ZX Ganon, if you, if you will. Okay, he killed another harvester, so that's kind of funny. Okay. Those are the last mining spots. Sands the main base. Oh, committing hard. Okay, killing the war refiner is was probably not the smartest move here. Because there is another one, and that one is not gonna die, so... At the end of the day, mining operations are still going on. But you can come back with the Black Hawk. And then it is real long distance mining, because this is the only refinery for the time being. That is gonna be left standing. Oh, Kav actually got two more oil derricks, so... He still does have some semblance of production. But yeah. Alrighty. One last ditch effort from the heavy tank. Kav is nothing if not resilient. He's trying so hard. I think that would be time for a tech center. You know what? Fazer's economy is not all that great. He's got six harvesters and he's a sort of long distance mining ish. So, not the greatest. Wait, Kaf does have a sizable push geared up here. Oh my goodness. If Fazer manages to lose to the all in push on this one base build, this would be something. This would be absolutely bloody hilarious. No way this is gonna happen, right? No way in hell. Oh, that's such good protection, but the Heinz are the Blackhawks are they are connecting. They're connecting in a big way here. He's trying to crash land them right into the blob. The bulk of the blob has been cleaned up, and just like that, I think that's that's gonna be it. Kaf surely must call it. He must be calling it after this push. I mean, that really was the Blackhawks landing in the perfect spots. GG, but it was closer than it actually looked. I At the end, I think Kav had a scary army. He, he definitely had a shot at taking out the main base and then he could have snowballed it from there and there were really not, no more bases sent the FCOMs. That little, little outpost. Alright, that was a really competitive game and we're gonna be back in game number 5, so Silver Scrapes it is. Be right back. Battle control terminated. Battle control initialized. Alrighty, getting me all giggly. Here is the Silver Scrapes match, and it is a Britain versus Britain mirror. I guess uh, UK versus UK mirror, for being precise. It is uh, the flags of all the all the five kingdoms. Which, uh, yeah, we we now have an assistant teacher who's gonna stay uh, at our school for a year, and it's the first time that there's an assistant teacher from Britain. Because uh, it used to be uh, American assistance teachers, and now we've, for the first time we've got some British cultural influence, and it showed that the students were really confused because he's from, um, wait a sec, from Leeds, yeah, he's from Leeds, and people did not understand shit about what I was saying. So the students definitely have to get used to that uh, to that Leeds accent. It's gonna take him a while, I guess, and. Uh, with myself also usually practicing a more American pronunciation. But it would be really nice to have a Scottish Scottish native speaker for a change. Something more of a erotic accent, that would be great. Unfortunately, that uh, hasn't come to fruition just yet, but that's something I had petitioned. <laughs> just for the students, just to provide a little bit of a show. Alrighty, we are on military mind. And double refinery build for both players. Eh, five seconds dis discrepancy. Calf, what's what's going on here? What's up? And just a uh, little fat fingering the macro. Oh, this is the map. I, I like this map. It's got the FCOM in the back. It's got the gem mine in the back. The um, And the pillboxes to protect at least one of the flanks. 
I think that's a that is a cool technical map where you, where you can like get some sneaky and technical plays off. I'm always a big fan of that. Right, let's see where this is gonna take us. So far, however, it is a large map. You have to cover some real some massive big real estate here. Bigly, bigly. The vision line for Fazar is not all that great. I mean, he's colorblind. He's not. He's not actually blind, but his vision line is kind of constricted, comparatively speaking. If we look at Kav, let's go to Kav's vision. Yeah, he's got him spread out like a string of pearls. And then let's go back to Fazar. Darkness. Let the darkness claim you. Those pillboxes are kind of an interesting conundrum. Do you sell them? Because if you don't, you need an extra power plant. Pillboxes, I think, cost 15 power. Or 15 kilowatts or whatever that is. Megawatts, I guess. Nah. I mean, a pillbox. It's a pillbox. How much energy can it need, right? <laughs> it's got a, a couple light bulbs in there. But then even the kennel takes 5 kilowatts. So the power grid in, in, in Red Alert, not all that stable. So Triple Harvester out now for Fazer, and everybody has claimed all their stakes. I don't know if that was intentional, if um, he shift queued, no. Because what you can do is you can shift queue all the, all the ore. Oh, he's doing it actually. If you're shift queuing all the ore, then there is more room to, uh, to make the gems grow. And I think that's gonna increase your revenue a little. The Ranger from Calf is a really smart investment because they can now pick off some stragglers here and there. And especially with the prevalence of scouts that uh, Calf has littered about the map. That is just gonna be free pickings. Oh no, it's, it's Calf's Ranger. Never mind. But I mean, there are some scouts about for, for Fazer. And with the mobility advantage, you can definitely take that Derek back at least for a little bit. The good old song and dance. Oh, there is no APC out for Fazer this time around. He's rushing an MCV. He's still... No, there must be. Oh, there it is. There's the Ranger. And by APC, I mean Ranger, obviously. In a Britain mirror. UK mirror. Hi. He did not take his pillboxes. Why? That strikes me as a curious choice. By the way, my game just tapped out for some reason, but it didn't seem to affect the recording, at least I hope. So let's hope this is still going strong. Gatekeeper build, moving out. No, it's not Gatekeeper. Never mind, he's just repositioning. I thought it would be moving out with his main MCV as well, just to claim some more, some more juicy mines. This map lends itself to slower games. I actually think that you could get away with the War Factory rush here. And the reason for the slower games, obviously, it's just that it takes a long time to cover this much ground. Eh, it's just scouting for the army. Ooh, such a juicy batch of rocket soldiers. Take him, they're a gift. Please. Has he scouted anything just yet? It's so close. Ah, he's seen it now. He's seen it all. The all-seeing eye of Sauron has spotted the expansion lines. Fazer playing super defensively. Kav just taking out the old Eric for free. Ah, not for free. This rifle's gonna die. Yeah. Scorch mark on the ground. Rip. Again, Kav, it appears, has the smaller army. He's got a bulk of his infantry up north. I don't know if that's a good call. He was probably gonna have to consolidate his armies at some point. But mass barracks have been out and procured, so that's good. MCV is moving forward just a little bit. And we've got the front lines drawn. Battle lines have been drawn. Uh, if what you're hearing in the background is my son. I hope I don't have to interrupt the cast. It may be the case. Kav not giving away any tanks for free, so that's nice. Some good micro. Good map awareness. And he's immediately following it up by drawing the battle lines and... Uh, Reinforcing on this side, he sees that there's the majority of the army here. Yeah, Fazer all eggs in one basket. That's his entire army. 
Whereas on the other side, Kav is going for a more um, split approach. The divide and conquer. He's also going to be able to secure his, his map, part of the map there. Oh, the hospital coming in big. Coming in clutch. It's going to heal up that rifle scout. Yeah. Look at the healing go. And the vision line provided also manages to kill another scout for free. Yeah. We're, we're in the big leagues now. Kav is... He definitely does not want to die to, to an all-in here. He is waiting. He's waiting and baiting so hard. Kav's Ranger should get maybe patched up. He's got the Raider Dome really early. Again, 7 minute timing. Is there a 7 minute timing here as well? Nope. No hidden ones either. Oh no! Kav actually managed to get the Oil Derrick right under the nose of, of Kav. And he got the mother of all flanks off. It's gotten... It has been revealed. Okay, should I stay or should I go? It's now the question. Because you don't manage to stop this with this meager push. Okay, that's gonna be so tough to stop. A complete all-in from Fazer. He knows that there is something coming his way. But there is way too little in, in terms of infantry. But he's... Yeah, his army is crashing into the base of Cav like a torrent. Expansion is going down almost immediately with zero resistance. The MCV relocating frantically. Oh, maps are split. And there's going to be the base trade. Oh, this is going to be so juicy. One harvester going down here. I mean, where do you even cast? Where? What angle are you going to cast here? This is so tricky. I think the calf has gotten the better end of the trade already because he's already on the infrastructure. That is so crucial. Well, Harvester is not connecting for the time being. The MCV could get saved. Uh, it's a bit too late, I think. Artilleries would be the answer, but Kav does not have tier 2 at all. So there's no War Factory production here for Fazer. And as a result, Fazer's base is going to get dismantled. He's got one single helicopter out right now. That's not what he needs. But Fazer is also still going strong. I mean, that's going to be an obliteration of both the bases. Fazer's MCV escaping because <laughs> the tank is being boxed in by the infantry. It's a common problem. Not only an open array. Yep. Cap selling out. Who has got the better bank? That's going to be an interesting one. Both floating 12k. Six har five harvesters now <laughs> remaining for Cav. Just dropping one casually. Oh, yeah, that's the Raider Dome down as well. The only helicopter going down, Raider Dome going down. I think Kav has got this on lockdown. Man, this was a competitive game, though. The army from Fazer is trying to rotate. I don't think he can stop this anymore. And the damage has been done already. He should maybe have tried to push on forward. But it's really hard to call. Making judgment calls from the safety of the caster's couch is... a. Uh, Always a bit tricky. Never really an honest, uh, never really an honest assessment possible. Yeah, that's gonna be the entire base being blown up. I think there is no more infrastructure left. Oh, he sold this conyard as well. That is complete all in. All he can build now is uh, infantry, helicopters, and he has no more econ left. Ah, he's got the gem mine. Okay, I think this is yeah, this is just do or die for Fazer. If he doesn't manage to kill this entire army and rebound and kill Kav off in an all-in, he's lost. Because Kav does still have a base. One of these players is able to rebuild, the other one certainly ain't. Yeah. At least casting is getting easier here. <laughs> as the armies are getting cleaned up. Man, yeah, this army was not was unstoppable. GG's. So, Kav taking a clutch 3-2 victory. So, the result didn't change, it's just that the game length got extended with the extension to, uh, to 5 in the series. Awesome stuff. That was really highly enjoyable. Thank you all for watching. And we'll be back with the second part of the RHL playoffs. Uh, <laughs> hopefully sooner, not 10 days in between. 
Um, yeah, it's been it's been a really good one. I'm really enjoying this. It's just that I'm rarely finding the time nowadays. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Five aces out. Battle control terminated.